Oh, hi everyone. Today, I'd be wanting to make this video about why I'm going to review Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Specifically because I mentioned to my, my sister Rana that I explained to her why it bombed at the box office. For some reason it was dead on arrival after all we've been through that I've understood that there's something amazing I can think of. Even though I've noticed this film is coming into hot water over its poor ratings, as I noticed that there's something weird about the negative reviews about this movie, I've understood it's quite divisive. So, as I know, this movie, which is directed by Peyton Reed, was written by Jeff Loveness, and it was based on Marvel Comics, and it was produced by Kevin Feige, Stephen Brossard, and stars Paul Rudd, Evangelny Lilly, Jonathan Majors, Catherine Newton, David Dastamalchian, Katie O'Brien, uh, William Jackson Harper, Bill Murray, Michelle Pfeiffer, Corey Stoll, and Michael Douglas. And most notably, the cinematography was done by Bill Pope. It was edited by Adam Gastel and Laura Jennings. The music was done by Christophe, Christophe Beck. Yeah, Christophe Beck. And, and its production companies was Marvel Studios. It was distributed by Walt Disney Studios Motion Pictures, which first came out on February 6, 2023, on a budget that I could think of. Even though its budget was $200 million, it bombed itself at $357.3 million. That's for its reasons. This movie feels like a spin-off to uh, Loki, as how we could discover what this movie deals with. It deals with Scott and Hope getting trans transported to the quantum realm, along with their family to face Kang the Conqueror. As I noticed, there's something hilarious about this movie. Let's tackle the plot that is very simple. Well, the development of its production started around 2019, when they had a lot to play with, with potential third films and franchise, which is like just dripping our toes into it. Even though this movie was set to have been released for 2022, throughout its filming, it was filmed in Pinewood Studios in Buckinghamshire under its working title, Dust Bunny, with William Pope serving as cinematographer for the Industrial Light and Magic Company to provide the same stagecraft video virtual production technology that Reed used for The Mandalorian from Star Wars. That was on Disney+. Plus. Even though it felt a bit very interesting that they brought Modoc in it. Although they forgot to put Mobius and Loki in it. As I know, Tom Hiddleston was going to show up in this movie and were well, Victor Timely as Mobius. Throughout the councils of Khan that had Immortus, Ramatat and Scarlet Centurion, the marketing of its release this movie was originally going to come out in, on July 28, 2023, but then they moved it up to February 17th, 2023. And the funniest thing is that there's something crazy about this movie that felt off. Well, much like Space Jam New Legacy, the plot is simple. In the year 2025, Scott enjoys his life living in San Francisco as a public hero sometime after the events of, of, Avengers, Infinity, of Avengers Endgame and also after the events of Multiverse of Madness, Love and Fun Devil, Candle Forever have left off. From this moment, um, Scott discovers that his father Hank has built a power core that will take him to the quantum realm to rescue his mother Jeanette. With the help of his wife Hope, who has rescued his, her, his, his daughter, Cassie, they decide to work together to deal with the family business of what this movie dealt with. Although, despite some COVID concerns, there's something funny about this movie. Throughout the whole movie, 
They used the power code to zap themselves into the quantum realm, which was an intergalactic realm full of aliens that you might saw them from Strange World. Anyways, speaking of Strange World, as I know that Strange World was an animated movie, which is mostly about an alien planet full of human aliens traveling to the, the, the inside body system of a turtle, it felt like Quantum Air stole a lot of ideas straight directly from Strange World. Especially its flopping of the LGBTQ fan fiction felt a bit too scapegoaty. Well, despite this, throughout the Council of Kangs, Kang the Conqueror leads an army of his clones to pretty much take down uh, Scott in what they're trying to be like it's too much of a Star Wars ripoff. As I know, I thought Strange World was a Star Wars ripoff too. But that could also apply to Lightyear. For some reason, why I didn't like Lightyear is that Lightyear was all about time travel. It didn't make sense to have a space ranger going forwards and backwards in time travel. I know they tried to steal an idea from Lightyear for some reason. I felt that something felt off. So, halfway throughout this movie, they noticed that some broccoli guy told Scott that Jeanette is stuck somewhere in the woods of the quantum realm. In what they noticed that they found Jeanette and they decided to pretty much escort her back to safety. But Khan the Conqueror summons an army of Modocs to do his bidding and pretty much get the family killed. Even though they are forced to fight each other to the nail. This all leads up to a crazy confrontation of a final battle that dealt with Khan the Conqueror being ant mans final boss. Well, as opposed to having Yellow Jacket as the starter villain of the ant man trilogy, I felt aware that this was trying to be its own treasure planet. However, the finest thing is after Scott kills Kang, even though Scott decides to avenge Modoc's death for this. Scott and his family are reunited together for a reunion at their house. And in a post credit scene, the Council of Kang discover that that, that, that that their leader Kang has been killed for, for, off for real. Well, on screen, of course. However, despite this, they notice that there's a sequel hook leading to a direct sequel to ant and the Wasp, Quantumania. But I feel aware that the writing and everything I know that what happened in Country Bears, I know I thought Country Bears was probably bad enough. I know I understood that ever since I compared the similarities between Country Bears and ant and the Wasp, Quantumania. I think they're the same movie because, you know, Scott and his family have to go on a road trip to the Quantum Realm to rescue their beloved mother, Janet, while the country bears is mostly about a group of funny animal bears trying to go on a road trip to the wild to see what they can do to each other. However, it's quite of a strangely weird idea what its reviews are like. I know lots of people are bashing this movie for saying that it doesn't make any sense of why there's too many clones out there. As I know, this movie is not all that great, and I don't understand what the writing is like. But to top it all off, I did, I ha have to learn about what it received. It did receive mixed reviews from critics, because they criticized the, the story and inconsistent tone and visuals, and they praised the performances of Majors and Pfeiffer. However, with that out of the way, let me just say, I have no choice but to give this movie a ridiculous 4.9 out of 10. Well, despite Goodbye Yellow Brick Road being used as that song for the film, this said, even though Elton John did a pretty good job creating that song, this song felt like it was interesting to have this movie be feeling like it feels like the MCUs ran out of ideas after it entered seasonal rot with Spider-Man Far From Home, which sparked the beginning of Phase 4. 
and Phase 4 ended in Wakanda Forever. All of them had received, all of the Phase 4 movies had received mainly mixed reviews, but sadly, there comes a crushing defeat of what I could have imagined this movie. It felt like I didn't want to watch this movie at all. But, I know it's kind of quantum lame here for me. So that's all I can say about this video. So, if you'd hit the like button of this said m movie, you want to hit to my, subscribe to my account. This could be me, Sohail Caribola, signing off. So, bye-bye.